How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. In the first installment of the ATV series, I pulled all of the plastic bodywork off of this thing so that I could finally access the engine and get to the stator. Since then, off camera, I went ahead and drained the oil and the coolant. I didn't really think that you guys needed to see fluids drain because that's about as exciting as watching paint dry. But now that that's done, we're able to start taking these uh, pieces off the side of the engine so that we can access the stator and get it changed. That's what we're doing today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. I know the stator lives inside the engine here uh, behind this recoil starter and then behind this next plate. So, I mean, I've never done this before, but near as I can figure, we just need to start taking these parts off until we can get access to it. The next step is to remove this pulley that the pull starter uses to turn the engine over. This bolt in the center here has a conventional thread. Sometimes these are reverse thread, but I went ahead and checked and this one is normal. Um, either way, the DeWalt impact driver is probably not gonna be up to this task. I think we're gonna have to call in the pneumatic impact driver because these are usually very tight. All right, so this is a 19 millimeter <laughs> conventional thread, so. See if we can get her. Well, moving on. The next item that has to be removed here is the water pump. Now, as I look at this engine cover, it kind of looks like the water pump and everything could come off as one assembly. But after uh, doing some reading up on this project, uh, it says that the water pump needs to come off. So it's just a few uh, eight millimeter bolts, it looks like. We can have them off in no time. Uh, that's something. All right, try to not damage the gasket. Next, the water pump impeller is gonna have to be removed. I don't know how easy it's gonna be for you guys to see but there's a bolt right here in the center and this impeller is actually um, gonna interfere with this cover coming off. So we gotta take this off. I have no reason to believe that that's a backwards thread, so we're just gonna try to take it off uh, in the normal direction and we'll see what happens. All right, and off she comes. So now I think it's just a matter of all these eight millimeter bolts off the side. I don't know. We'll see. What are you doing? Are you here to help? Why are you here to help? Oh, you're here to get on camera. Alright, it's loose. That's a good sign. But it ain't coming yet. So what do we gotta do? Alright, I got all these 8mm bolts around the side of the case removed and I tried to wiggle the cover free as you guys saw. Uh, but something was stopping it and near as I can figure, this ring right here that the uh, pull start pulley bolts onto, um, I think it needs to be removed as well because Everything here was moving, but this ring was not. So um, it, it, was, it, it was the thing, as far as I could tell, that was blocking me from pulling this case off. So I'm gonna figure out how to get this off of here, and then hopefully the side of the case will come off. All right, so we have hit our first uh, unplanned snag. It looks like this, uh, whatever we wanna call it, this plate, or I'm, I'm sure there's a better name for it. It looks like normally that would slide off uh, without much problem. But as we zoom in and kind of get a close look, you can see that there is a key slot here on the outside plate. And then there's a key slot with what looks like a broken keyway 
here on the shaft itself. So somehow this looks to have rotated and broken the keyway uh, because this key slot and this key slot should line up and they're not obviously. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out how to remove that without uh, causing further damage. I'm not really sure how that happened even, but it did. So we're just going to have to figure it out. All right. Well, sometimes you can stare at something for a while and then realize that the answer has been right in front of you the whole time. When I pulled this pulley off of the little flange here, what I kind of failed to notice is that there are two threaded holes, one here and one here. Now in industrial machinery, when you have to remove these little flange plates, they put the threaded holes there so that you can twist a bolt in there and the bolt will essentially push the plate out. So we're going to give it a try and just be real gentle with it. Um, and the other thing too, the good news, I was able to turn this by putting the pulley on the two tabs here. I was able to turn the plate and at least get these keyways lined up again. Uh, so hopefully that's going to help with it coming off. Yeah, let's do it. It's moving. All right. But let's see if we can pull this side of the case off and see what we've got back here. Okay, I've traced the wires up the uh, intake tube here for the belt drive and um, they go on right up here behind the radiator. This big plug here is the stator, so we need to unplug this, which with these electrical plugs, you just never quite know how they want you to do it. <clears throat> there, finally got it. Oh, wow. That I wasn't expecting. I don't know if you can see the end of this plug here is fried. Um, so yeah, hopefully that didn't cause damage further up the electrical system. That's kind of worrisome. Hmm. Okay, well, one thing at a time. Let's get this out of here. All right, we got it, finally. Wow, yeah, that thing is destroyed. Guys, yeah, if you get a close look at this stator, you can see it's all burned up. Uh, I don't know if it got oil on it or what happened, but yeah, that, that's in terrible shape. Any wonders it wasn't working. Yeah, you can see right there, it got really hot and sort of melted the copper. Now, these down here don't look so bad. Well. That one doesn't look great, but you get up here where the wires come into the stator and yeah, these are, these are toast. Well, the good news is, is that I am pretty sure we figured out what the problem with the four wheeler was. Obviously that stator is not in proper working condition and completely explains all the symptoms that this thing was showing. The bad news is like with most of these projects, now that I'm up to my elbows in it, I can see that I need, I need to order a few more parts. So I'm not going to be able to get this thing back together all the way tonight. So 
for now, I think we're going to call this. I need to get back on the phone and order some more parts for this thing. And next week, hopefully I can get it back together and get it running again. Until then, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me today, guys. And I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Mm -hmm.